एडमिरल के सर असलाकुम सर Can you hear me, uh, whoever wished me? Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, sir. I'm ca Captain Minar, sir. Assalamualaikum, sir. Oh, Minar, Waalaikum Assalam. How are you? Sir, hello, sir. Are you well, sir? Alhamdulillah, not not bad. Alhamdulillah. Sir, with the corona, with the Allah, mota mota, well, you are. Jai Rakhi Shyam, thank you. Thank you, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, sir. Minar, K S, are you back in Bangladesh or still from Canada? I'm participating from Canada. I I I could not forget Bimrad, so I'm still <laughs> participating from. Sorry, I'm participating from all the way from. You know, it's. It's quite late at night. Assalamualaikum, sir. Hasib. Assalamualaikum. Hasib, I can. Can I not say? Hello, sir. Hello. On a day for Declam, sir. I mean, at least uh, virtually. Hello. It's been a pleasure. It is. It is never late like for for Bimrad. <laughs> For Bimrad, any any time is uh, a good time for us. Actually, it's not late at all, Doctor Asim. It's very early in the morning. Yes. Yeah. Getting to one o'clock in the morning, I think. Am yeah, I right? it's, <laughs> it's, it's close, close to midnight. But for, as I said, for Bimrad, Bimrad, any time is a good time. ट इन दिस Subject is so close to me, close to my heart. Doctor Mansur, how is things in wherever you are in UK or Bangladesh? <laughs> no, I, I'm back in Bangladesh. I, I arrived a few days ago. Okay, good. So we'll meet hopefully soon, inshallah. Dr. Hasib,
चेयरमैन सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम मिनार आई कैन हियर यू सर थैंक यू सर सर हमरा टाइम दी हम शुरू कर देते बारी सर प्लीज सर थैंक यू सर वालेकुम सर जी जी डॉक्टर हसीब वी कैन स्टार्ट गुड मॉर्निंग इज एवरीबॉडी अस्सलाम वालेकुम Welcome to this uh, fantastic uh, webinar uh, entitled "Marine Biodiversity of Bay of Bengal: Assessing the Challenges for the Economic Growth of Bangladesh." Although it talks about challenges, but I'm sure our esteemed uh, presenters uh, will be sharing some um, what you call it recommendation as well as uh, way forward with us. Uh, let me share with you the. Uh, of course, first I, I should introduce myself. I'm Hasib Mohammad Irfanullah. I'm a visiting research fellow at the Center for Sustainable Development at the University of uh, University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh, in Lab. I'm also an independent consultant working in the environment, climate change, and risk system. I will be moderating today's webinar. From the audience, uh, we understand that they are fantastic. We are a fantastic group of people. Uh, who are passionate about uh, oceans, um, ocean ecosystem, biodiversity, uh, how policy implication is uh, uh, influencing our economic growth and how can we balance our economic growth as well as marine biodiversity conservation. Very quickly, I would like to introduce today's program. First, we will be hearing from the acting chairman of BINDAR, Admiral M. Lokman Rahman. Then we will be going to the here the keynote presenter, Professor uh, Dr. Kazi Hassan Habib, who is with the Sheri Bangla Agricultural University. I will be introducing uh, in detail uh, all the presenters uh, when uh, they will be before they will be giving their presentation. We have three panelists among ourselves, and uh, first we will be hearing from uh, Elizabeth Farni Mansur. She is with uh, C, uh, WCS, uh, Wildlife Conservation Society, Our second panelist is Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Waha. He is currently with World Fish Bangladesh. And our third panelist is Professor Saeed Rahman Chaudhary. He is at University of Chicago. After those presentations, we will be uh, having an open discussion. Uh, dear audience, uh, please do. Uh, write down your comments as well as if you have any questions, please do direct it to any of the presenters mentioning their name. We will be having an open discussion session. I'm also requesting our presenters to uh, often uh, monitor the Zoom chat box so that they can see whether anybody is asking them any question. After the open discussion, I will be summing things up and we will be hearing from uh, Director General Dimbrak. 
So that's our program. Just a little bit about uh, the context of today's webinar, which is jointly being organized by, as you all know, the Bangladesh Institute of Maritime Research and Development and Chairman Agricultural University. When we talk about uh, marine biodiversity, our way of Bengal, and economic growth, there are quite a few things come up in our, in our mind. Bangladesh's development, we all know the story of Bangladesh's economic growth is uh, magnificent. In 1990, we had uh, almost 60% uh, poverty as a whole, but uh, just before the COVID, it brought down to 21% in 2019. It's a fantastic story over three, 30 years. And our GDP growth was uh, around eight, seven to eight percent for five years before the COVID. And in 2018, we attained the lower, lower middle income country status of the criteria for the first time. And we believe that we will be uh, attaining that permanently in a couple of years' time. Bangladesh government has uh, developed its Mujib Climate Prosperity Plan, which aimed to make Bangladesh upper middle income country at the end of this decade. And we also know that Bangladesh is aiming for Vision 2041. It means in two decades, we will become a higher income country. Higher income country. So given all this context of development, uh, COVID-19 has, has jeopardized all our um, economic growth pathways. We all know that. Um, but when we talk about economic recovery, COVID pandemic, we need to think of how many resources, especially biodiversity, can, can contribute. How can we balance this economic growth and conservation together? And how, most one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, we will be hearing about it from uh, you know, Professor Wahab, how climate change impact is impacting this particular ecosystem, the ecosystem and coastal region of Bangladesh. So if this is the context, uh, uh, let me let me start off with our uh, welcome note, and I'm now requesting our uh, honourable chairman, Bimra, Rear Admiral M. Lokman Rahman, sir, to give the deliver the welcome speech, sir. Thank you, Dr. Hasib. Uh, before I start, uh, may I request those who uh, are who have not unmuted their uh, sound system uh, so, uh, to mute the sound system so that uh, it doesn't reflect the e uh, echo. Right, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, prominent keynote speaker, eminent panelist, proficient academicians, national and international marine experts and researchers, maritime scholars. Distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. I hope all of you can hear me. It's a matter of privilege. Sorry, yes, sir. Okay. It's a matter of privilege for me to welcome you all in today's webinar session on the theme Marine Biodiversity of Bay of Bengal, assessing the challenges for the economic growth of Bangladesh, jointly organized by. Bangladesh Institute of Maritime Research uh, and Development and Shere Bangla Agriculture University, Bangladesh. I am confident that our joint effort will bring a positive outcome and identify the challenges that need to be addressed immediately in this sector. Distinguished guest, at the outset, I humbly pay my deepest tribute to the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. He prudently underscored the vast importance of the sea for the development of a maritime country. As a testimony of Bangabandhu's leadership and vision, soon after the independence, even before the promulgation of UNCLOS III in 1982, he enacted the Territorial Waters and Maritime Jones Act 1974, which was the one of the very fundamental and main instrument of our winning the claim of it loss. And we all know that in recent past, under the dynamic leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Bangladesh has obtained her rightful share in Bay of Bengal by peacefully resolving maritime boundary disputes with her neighbors. This 
herald new opportunities for Bangladesh for optimum utilization of sea resources for sustainable development of the country. The Bay of Bengal is one of the largest marine ecosystem covering over 6 million kilometer square. It has about 14,000 kilometer of shorelines and provides nutrition to around 400 million people. And we all know that the Bay is surrounded by eight littoral countries, namely Bangladesh, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Maldives, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. We know that numerous rivers such as Ganges, Brahmaputra, Irrawaddy, Krishna, Kaveri, Godavari, and Mahanandi flow into the Bay of Bengal, fetching an enormous quantity of residues. We know that coastal zone of Bangladesh is geomorphologically and hydrologically dominated by the Ganges, Brahmaputra, Meghna, Deltic system and Bay of Bengal. Bangladesh has a maritime area of 118,813 square kilometer, which is rich in marine biodiversity and resources. The Bay littorals represent 8% of the total mangrove and 12% of the world coral reef area. It is also home for different species of fishery resources. And we all know that the Sundarban mangrove forest not only provides timber, wood, fuel wood, raw materials for the industries, but also shields the coastal area from devastating natural disasters. Proficient scholars and practitioners. A sustainable ecosystem is very important for our Blue, Blue Economy Initiative. In Bangladesh, over exploitation of our marine and coastal resources is a major threat to our ecosystem. And we all know that it's not systematical. We can exploit, but it should be very systemi systematical and uh, you know, uh, keeping the ecosystem in right position. As we know that marine biodiversity is also significant for our food security and instrumental in realizing the blue economy pot potentials of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe that Bimbrad and Sherry Bangla Agriculture University and those who are working in similar fields will extend their cooperation and provide support to identify the challenges in regards to the degradation of biodiversity. The land-based resources are depleting rapidly and becoming unsustainable. In this context, marine resources are becoming more important in attaining economic objectives outlined in Vision 2041. It is also important to maintain a balance between economic objectives and ecological stability. If the marine resources are managed and governed by principles of biodiversity protections and conservation, along with the institutional efforts intervened with a vision of scientific approach, we may be able to resolve the challenges related to biodiversity and depletion of marine resources. It will also generate employment opportunities and bring about tangible changes in the lives and livelihood of millions of people across Bangladesh. I am confident that today's session hosted by Bimrad and Sherry Bangla Agriculture University would play a significant role in developing some guidelines for the future research works, strategies, and principles in this field. I look forward to all concerned organizations, researchers, intellectuals, and maritime communities for their extended cooperation, support, and initiative for making these institutions center of excellence for the maritime community of this region and the world. Eminent fellows, before I conclude, I would like to convey my heartfelt thanks to the keynote speaker, Dr. Kazi Hassan Habib, panelist, Madam Elizabeth, and Professor Dr. Abdul Hohab, Professor Saidur, Jama, uh, Saidur Rahman Choudhury, and our uh, moderator, Dr. Hasib Muhammad Irfanullah, for being present here despite their very busy schedule. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to Shere Bangla Agriculture University for taking the initiative to host this webinar jointly with Bimrad. I also sincerely acknowledge the gracious presence of all distinguished guests and scholars. Finally, 
I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the Chief of Naval Staff for his wholehearted support and active assistance in organizing this webinar and contributing towards sustainable development of maritime Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, welcome address. Uh, it actually not only welcome everybody, but also giving us the direction of the expectation from this fantastic gathering. Thank you very much for appealing to everybody to join in BIMBRAR's uh, uh, innovation, as well as uh, uh, inspiring war, which is being having, happening over the last three years or so. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your words. Now let us move on to the uh, presentation. First, we will be hearing from our keynote uh, speaker, Professor Dr. Kazi Hassan Habib. Let me introduce uh, uh, Professor uh, Habib. He has been uh, very prominent in his own field. Uh, professor Habib is a professor as well as the chairman of the Department of Fisheries, Biology and Genetics at the Faculty of Fisheries and Aquaculture and Marine Science at Chirbangla Agricultural University. At the moment, uh, he is also serving as the Dean of the Faculty and directing the Aquatic Power Resource Research Lab at his university. Dr. Habib's research interests include marine biodiversity, DNA taxonomy, population genetics, and geography, and conservation biology of aquatic organisms, not only the fresh, uh, marine ones, but also the freshwater ones. He has been involved in working in St. Martin's Island, Shinderbone Wetland, uh, as well as he has been on the National Technical Committee as an expert, which is being established, which has been established uh, for We'll be hearing from uh, Professor Chaudhuri later on regarding very productive area. Professor Habib has published so far uh, 50 research articles, quite a few books, uh, as well as scientific uh, textbook as well. He is a member of Bangladesh Fisheries Research Forum, in the Zoological Society of Bangladesh, which should be the institution of Bangladesh. And, uh, he is obviously a graduate of uh, fisheries and he did his MS in aquaculture from the Bangladesh Agricultural University in Manasi. Um, later on, he obtained his PhD in marine biology from the uh, Korea Institute of Ocean Science and Technology, which is under the institution, University of Science and Technology. Uh, that's uh, all from me. We will be hearing uh, a keynote speaker talking about the status of our knowledge on ocean, bio, ocean biodiversity, the gaps, and the potentials for their protection and sustainable development. Sir, the screen is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I welcome everybody in our uh, in, in this uh, webinar and. Uh, this webinar is jointly uh, uh, arranged by my university, Shirebang Agriculture University, and uh, PIMRAD. So I also thanks uh, want to uh, pay my thanks to PIMRAD for this initiative and and to come forward with, with us. Uh, now I will I want to share my slide. Would you please make it so, uh, Yeah. Uh, are you? Yeah. So my my slide is visible. Yes, it is visible. Would you make it full screen? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Professor Habib, you have twenty two minutes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, today, sorry. Today. Uh, I'm not seeing actually. Yeah, we can see the title slide. 
it is moving as well. Please do continue. No problem. Uh, Sheila, I'm not seeing my slide. Well, yes, just wait. Uh, today, uh, okay, uh, but today the title of my presentation is Marine Biodiversity of the Bay of Bengal, Assessing the Challenges for the Economic Growth of Bangladesh. You have been muted. Would you please unmute yourself? Okay, the, uh, today the title of my presentation is Marine Biodiversity of the Bay of Bengal, Assessing the Challenges for the Economic Growth of Bangladesh. I am Professor Kaji Hassan Habib from Shere Bangla Agriculture University. Uh, so this is the marine uh, maritime area of Bangladesh. It is almost 1,18,813 square kilometer, and it has huge potential of our economy. So if when uh, the first I would like to introduce about the concept of biodiversity. Actually, when we, in general, when we think about biodiversity, we, we generally think about only species diversity. But actually biodiversity means the species diversity within ecosystem, genetic diversity within a species and ecosystem diversity in a region. So when we will assess the biodiversity of, uh, of a country or of a specific region. So we have to consider these three uh, things. Uh, then we can assess fully about the biodiversity. Uh, the size diversity of, uh, the, um, uh, of the marine species, we know marine, uh, so uh, our sea or ocean uh, contains from microscopic size phytoplankton, zooplankton to the uh, biggest animal uh, of the planet, that is a blue wall, we know. And when we will, uh, if we want to uh, study uh, the biodiversity um, of our country, so we can, uh, we can divide our coastal and estuarine ecological region of Bangladesh in, in three, uh, as three uh, areas. First one is, you see the um, just west side, or southwest side, Ganges tidal flood plain and mangrove region. Then middle uh, or middle side, uh, Meghna de deltic estuarine plain and Chattogram, and uh, east side is Chattogram Coxbazar coastal plain. And these three regions have separate uh, geomorphic and hydro hydrodynamic features. So the biodiversity is uh, kind of different for these three regions. Uh, then uh, I will I will want um, I want to show the major uh, biodiversity rich areas in the marine and estuarine and coastal areas of, of Bangladesh. First, you know about the Sundarbans. Then second one is the swatch of no ground. Then uh, another biodiversity rich area in the Chor Kukri Mukri and adjacent sea area. Another area is Nijum Deep area. Then the Kutubdia Moheshkali uh, islands and adjacent uh, sea areas, and then St. Martin Island reef habitat. Then we know the fishing grounds. We have four fishing grounds. Uh, then the hillsa breeding and nursery ground. So all of these are highly biodiversity rich and have importance to, for conservation and protection uh, point of view. So uh, this is the Sundarbans. We know that it is the world's largest single track of mangrove forest. And um, this is almost 10,000 square kilometer and 60% belong to uh, Bangladesh. And most importantly, nursery, uh, um, uh, there are um, these, uh, uh, these Sundarban mangrove forest area at adjacent uh, adjust estuaries and marine waters act as a nursery and breeding ground for fish and other aquatic life. And it is also declared as UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
and you know this is the sundarbans it is called also amazon of the east and then uh, the species diversity of sundarbans in a, a study uh, um, conducted in 2018 by habib et al so the species uh, fish is number of fish species or uh, is 322 almost arthropod 65 molluscs 54 amphibians 7 reptiles 24 aquatic mammals 4 and uh, so on and this is the book aquatic biodiversity sundarbans that is written by me uh, 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 you can get it uh, online and another important biodiversity rich area is the swatch of no ground we already know it is a submarine canyon um, and uh, 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 located just below the uh, downwards in, uh, of the sundarbans and it is almost 900 over 900 meter deep and uh, and this is the first marine protected area uh, in bangladesh declared by the bangladesh government and this is some um, pictures of some species of uh, the uh, swatch of no ground and uh, this is the nijum deep area and it is also declared recently as marine protected area and that uh, and the size of this mpa is 1188 square kilometer and uh, the objective was uh, to protect hillside breeding and nursery ground as well as habitats of marine fish crustaceans megafauna and migratory birds and this is the Coxbazar sea beach area and we know the sea beach and sand dune sea beach also act as the as an important habit of, of many species like small crabs and other herbs and other things also this sea beach area uh, give the uh, mm, mm, habitat for uh, uh, for breeding of different turtles and this is our saint martin island it is the only island in bangladesh where coral colonies are found and the species diversity is 204 species of reef fish are found here and uh, uh, 98 corals are found in this uh, in this small island and there are it is highly biodiversity rich uh, in bangladesh so you see some uh, very nice underwater picture of uh, uh, the St. Martin Island. And the, this book, Underwater Citizens of St. Martin Island, Bangladesh, I published recently. It is basically an album with the pictures, underwater pictures. And overall species diversity in Bangladesh, uh, the um, fin fish species 740. I updated this checklist and found that we have 740 fin fish species. Previously, it was thought only 460 or around like this. And there are also some other species diversity here 98 corals, 628 aquatic birds, 366 mollusks, 22 amphibians, and so on. And on genetic diversity, we have very few uh, works on genetic diversity, but recently uh, some people started work on diversity. This is uh, two papers on genetic diversity of marine, uh, uh, marine species of Bangladesh, uh, recently published in PLOS One, and another one is Ecology and Evolution. And this is the uh, marine bio. Uh, now, the, um, uh, um, I will uh, focus on the contribution of marine biodiversity in the economy of Bangladesh. So how marine biodiversity is uh, contributing in our economy. So, pro uh, so firstly, um, biodiversity, marine biodiversity provides us marine food fish. So hilsa, tuna, sardine, tiba, snappers, some are very important species. And some, there are some also non-conventional fishery, fishery items. And, uh, and um, we produce 659,000 metric ton uh, um, uh, 2018 and 19, uh, 19. and also we have ex we um, export some uh, of the marine fishes and other organisms. And this is the hillside fishery. So the in uh, 2018 and 19, it was almost 532,000 metric ton. So we know about the fisheries and it contributes 12% of total fish production in Bangladesh and 1% of GDP. Uh, GDP. And uh, this is the uh, ma captured marine and shrimp. Uh, so uh, in 2018-19, we have captured 42,789 uh, metric ton marine, uh, uh, marine uh, um, crustaceans. And, and then we know about the marine mud crab, which, which was, is collected uh, from the Sundarbans and other and adjacent region. region. So mud crab is another important species. Um, 
Then we have some non-conventional species, squid, octopus, lobster, oyster, and, and recently we have started the culture of seaweed. Uh, and and we, we know that trash fish also provide us, uh, provide the fish meal as protein source. And um, this is the capture fisheries. Capture fishery uh, activity accounts for 4.4% of national GDP and supports 22% to the agricultural GDP and 3% to the foreign exchange earnings. And about 1.5 million people are uh, involved directly and 12 million are uh, employed uh, part-time in this sector. And now the, um, the potential of uh, um, uh, the opportunities of utilizing biodiversity in the economic growth of Bangladesh. So this is uh, also unexplored now, which I, am, I will tell, unexplored first in mariculture opportunity. So we can select and domesticate potential of high valued species for marine, uh, marine case culture, race culture and others. And, and then these are some potential species we can, uh, we can uh, um, uh, start for uh, the mariculture. And then, then uh, the seaweed culture, we can intensify the, our seaweed culture, uh, um, culture in the country, but we need to identify the cultivable species and uh, sites, then the moisture and muzzle farming, we can uh, try, and, but need to seek suitable sites and species. Then marine pearl culture is another opportunity. Uh, we know the marine pearl is much more, uh, the price of marine pearl is much more higher than freshwater pearl. So we can start uh, this pearl culture, but we need to identify suitable and cultivable species. As far um, um, our knowledge, uh, several uh, pearl uh, oyster are present in the Bay of Bengal. And then we can search for new fisheries, not only marine fisheries, certain high valued species such as pelagic tuna, swordfish, and others uh, are rarely appeared in catches, despite their presence in deep water. So we can start deep water fishing uh, like, uh, um, like this. And then, uh, then we can, uh, and marine biotechnology is another opportunity. So unique bioactive compounds derived from marine organisms, which constitute nearly half of the global biodiversity have gained enormous interest in pharmaceuticals and, uh, and cosmetic industry. So uh, these bioactive com um, compounds uh, can act as antimicrobial, antioxidant, uh, and anti-aging agents. So we can use this opportunity based on marine uh, biodiversity. Now, even we can, uh, we can uh, um, uh, start underwater adventure in St. Martin Island based on its uh, rich biodiversity. Then, uh, then um, uh, I will, now I will focus the challenges and threats to protect marine biodiversity for sustainably contributing to the Bangladesh economic growth. So, um, so the major threats to the marine biodiversity and sustainable fisheries production of Bangladesh uh, are these six factors over fishing, coral bleaching, dead zones, acidification, mercury pollution due to industrialization, plastic pollution. These are not the issue of Bangladesh, it is also, these are also issue of growth, these are also the global issues. And, um, and if biodiversity is, is uh, lost, how biodiversity uh, loss can affect our uh, marine uh, ecosystem? I just told that all marine species have uh, species, uh, specific functions in their ecosystem. They capture and store energy, produce food and decompose organic materials. And if one or more species are removed or declined from the ecosystem, all these important functions will be diminished. So, uh, so the greater the diversity of an ecosystem, the better it can maintain balance and productivity and withstand environmental stress. So now I will focus, uh, I want to show you that recently one um, uh, um, an, uh, um, a, a study uh, found that uh, a dead zone has been formed in the middle of the Bay of Bengal. And it is very alarming. These dead zones, these zones don't contain any kind of uh, species. So, so we can't have diversity in a dead uh, sea. So this is, uh, the, it is almost about 60,000 square kilometer. And now uh, some threats for shim, uh, shim fry collection is another threat. The recent study uh, showed that shim fry collection in Meghna damage uh, Meghna damages aquatic biodiversity. 
uh, uh, taka uh, 6,000 uh, crore. And mud cap collection is from open art is another issue. Uh, we don't know the maximum sustainable yield of mud crab. And there is also insufficient and no hatcheries for producing enough tablets for aquaculture. So indiscriminate cats from open water can decline our mud crab diversity. And this is the shark fishery. Uh, we have many um, threatened sharks in our country, but we don't have national plan of action it is here and no, um, uh, no nursery ground identification and no uh, maximum sustainable yield for sharks. And this is the very uh, alarming, the poison fishing in Sundarbon. It, you know, it, it uh, destroy all the organisms from RV egg to large fishes. And coal-based power plants and other growing industries near Sundarbon are also uh, a threat um, and increased to, uh, tourism, uh, tourist pressure is also. And this is the uh, threats for Cox's Bazaar uh, sea beach uh, and uh, and near uh, uh, near biodiversity unplanned construction of infrastructure sounds and slides uh, uh, from marine drive and hotels motels and this is the threats for our Saint Martin Island coral extraction plastic pollution construction of buildings and coral breaking due to for construction and uh, and others coral bleaching due to climate change so it is needed to declare Saint Martin Island as MPA. Immediately, it is also necessary to implement locally led management and conservation initi initiative by local communities. Awareness program also uh, needed to start among tourists as local people. So, uh, so this is, but um, we have some very good um, um, rules and regulations. Uh, I, I showed here nine re uh, regulations and rules for biodiversity uh, conservation, but we, our implementation of these rules is very poor. We have to improve our implementation uh, procedure uh, to conserve the biodiversity. And uh, you know, globally, United Nations, um, uh, all UN member states adopted 17 SDGs in 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity prosperity by 2030. So among the, uh, in, in these uh, goals, uh, goal 14, uh, conserve, uh, conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. So oh, sir, Habib, uh, yeah, you, have, yes. you have three minutes left. Sure. So, so, so um, they, also, um, uh, they also determined some actions to achieve these goals. I will not go uh, elaborately here, uh, 10 actions uh, by through, uh, through in actions, we can achieve these goals. So, uh, so uh, internationally, and uh, also uh, there are many initiatives uh, to conserve the biodiversity. Another thing, according to the uh, IT, um, IT biodiversity target 11, Bangladesh needs to declare at least 10% of its marine area as protected area. So uh, our prime minister uh, recently um, uh, called um, uh, 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 places three proposals to the world community for durable use of marine resources, including biodiversity in virtual ocean dialogues hosted online uh, by um, World Economic Forum and Friends of Ocean Action, which is held in 2020. Uh, this is a very good proposal. Uh, so these three proposals, she called for assisting developing countries with critically required resources, capabilities, and uh, uh, technologies for um, uh, leveraging full potential of marine resources emphasized on conducting joint research on fisheries development with a view to significantly increasing regional fish production and eliminating illegal, unreported, and unregulated uh, fishing. And third proposal was to emphasize mapping and uh, management of resource identification and critical coastal habitat and biodiversity protection. So, and Uh, and, uh, and last of all, I will focus on one thing. The United Nations declared 2000, uh, uh, that this decade from 2021 to 2030 as the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. And all, of, all over the uh, world, many countries take a specific action and initiatives and plan to, uh, to successfully uh, implement uh, this uh, this decade, but uh, uh, very sorry to say, I did not 
get any uh, specific actions or initiatives by our government or in institutional level. So I think uh, we should come forward together, all the institutions and with the government and NGOs, how we can, uh, we can actu actually um, um, take the advantages of this, uh, of this decade. And uh, though it is started just this year, if we can start uh, this, uh, to celebrate this decade, then we can get help from UNESCO and other international organizations. So I will, um, uh, I will um, say all of you to come again, let's go work together to, uh, to implement uh, this uh, United Nations decade. And finally, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully I, I completed my uh, presentation briefly within the time. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Habib. Uh, it has been a fantastic presentation. You, you not only you, you have covered a lot, a lot of things. You, you introduce our, us about diversity, the challenges, uh, unexplored areas where we can actually explore and connect it with our uh, economic growth. We ended with uh, the proposals that were placed by Bangladesh in the World Economic Forum last year, as well as what we should do to celebrate even the key portion science. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sure that it will uh, stir with lots of enthusiasm and questions among our audience. Dear audience, as I uh, requested earlier, please feel free to write your question. Uh, please do mention, if you have any question to Professor Habib, mention his name and uh, uh, write down the question. He may answer it uh, in the chat, chat box or in the, during the open discussion. Thank you. Now, let us move to our second presenter. Uh, and uh, who is the first, of course, uh, we have three panel discussions. Uh, the first panel discussion is Ms. Elizabeth uh, Farni Monsu. Let me introduce her. She will be uh, talking about uh, essentially uh, marine biodiversity, uh, but focusing on potential ecosystem impacts of marine megafauna depletion in the Northern Bay of Bengal. To introduce her, um, she is the senior manager of the marine Conservation Program of Wildlife Conservation Society in Bangladesh, which is a very eminent um, international organization working all over the world, particularly in Bangladesh, especially in, uh, on uh, marine megafauna. She works closely with national and international development partners to support communities who are directly affected by climate change, loss of biodiversity, and uh, conservation management regulations that are imposed by the national government. She also collaborates with government agencies to implement marine species and habitat protection plans, rules, regulations, and combating legal, uh, sorry, illegal wildlife trade in compliance with regional and international compliance. Elizabeth is the Indian Ocean Regional Vice Chairman, Chairperson for the IUC and Species Survival Commission's Sharp Specialist Group. In fact, you see it is having its uh, uh, congress uh, at the moment in France. She is also a kinship conservation fellow trained in market-based tools for conservation and leadership. And she's a member of the Society of Marine Mammalogy Education Committee. Uh, so Elizabeth, the floor is yours. Thank you. You have nine minutes. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I am greatly honored to be invited to speak today about the impact of marine megafauna depletion on the marine ecosystem in the northern Bay of Bengal and solutions for maintaining a healthy ocean that can continue to support healthy people. Our ocean and the species that depend on it, including us humans, face an uncertain future. A three-year report on fish stocks in the Bay of Bengal, commissioned by the government and authored by one of my fellow speakers, Professor Saidur Rahman Choudhury, shows that almost all species are overfished in Bangladesh waters. Most fish stocks are in decline, with some species nearing extinction, and the largest and most valued species almost gone. WCS discovered relatively large populations of 10 cetacean species in Bangladesh, and photographs of the three dolphin populations we studied reveal a disturbingly large number of dolphins 
with mutilations and wounds caused by entanglement in fishing gear. And those are the ones that survived. An international study published just this week found that overfishing has driven one third of all known shark and ray species assessed in the IUCN red list of threatened species towards extinction. WCS research shows that two thirds of the over 100 species of sharks and rays confirmed or suspected to occur in Bangladesh are globally threatened. Overfishing not only affects ecologically vulnerable marine megafauna, without conservation management, marine wildlife diversity and abundance in Bangladesh will further decline with potentially detrimental effects on economically valued finfish stocks, fisheries livelihoods, and national food security and economy. The spatial and temporal complexity in the Northern Bay of Bengal explains the occurrence of marine megafauna with a large variety of species in generally larger numbers in Bangladesh compared to other countries in Asia. The decline of these species causes a top-down collapse of trophic levels as it disrupts complex marine food webs. This phenomenon known as trophic cascade occurs when keystone predators get removed, thus causing a chain reaction affecting the species in the lower trophic levels. The consequences of this is a loss in biodiversity. Due to the importance, as Dr. Abi just mentioned, Due to the importance that certain species may have to the ecosystems, this loss in biodiversity can cause regime shifts in which the whole ecosystem is altered. But this decline in biodiversity severely reduces the ability of our ocean to provide for the around 2 million people in Bangladesh that are dependent on fishing and fisheries related livelihoods and for overall population for which fish supplies about 60 percent of the animal protein. Considering the essential role of marine megafauna in maintaining ecosystem function and stability and their vulnerability to anthropogenic threats, the Wildlife Conservation Society in Bangladesh works to achieve ecosystem-based management and significantly reduce bycatch risk for among the world's most threatened marine megafauna. Through our at sea surveys and in collaboration with coastal fishermen trained as citizen scientists, we record geospatial information on marine megafauna sightings, fishing activities, catches, and landings. Based on this information, we identified species wise priority habitats and high risk areas where there is the greatest overlap between these species and fisheries using entangling gears. These multi species models enable us to develop marine spatial plans, meaning that we share the ocean space that define areas in need of conservation management with regulations that aim to optimize the protection of threatened species with local fishery needs. As Professor Habib just mentioned, WCS has so far identified three priority areas covering 10% of Bangladesh's exclusive economic zone with spatial conservation management recommendations that aim to benefit threatened marine wildlife, while also yielding benefits for fisheries, local economy, and food security. Two of these areas have been declared as marine protected areas by the government of Bangladesh, and a third MPA is under consideration. While these declarations uh, identify or indicate a strong commitment of the government of Bangladesh to protecting vital marine ecosystems, the implementation of effective management, including multi-use regulations, communicating those and monitoring and enforcing them remains to be assured. We have the knowledge to prevent mass extinctions of marine species in our oceans and avert further losses of marine ecological functions. Through inclusive and accountable conservation actions grounded in robust science and supported by informed stakeholders, we can secure the long-term ability of our seas to provide food and livelihoods for coastal communities, as well as to support a national blue economy. WCS is committed 
to support the government of Bangladesh in achieving ecosystem-based management in our coastal and marine waters, and significantly reducing bycatch risk for among the world's most threatened marine megafauna through science, conservation action, education, and inspiring people to value nature. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your fantastic. Was the status and the challenge. Now let us move on to uh, our second discussant, uh, a person who I'm very much fond of, Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdul Wahab. Let me introduce uh, Professor Wahab first. Uh, Dr. Abdul Wahab uh, is a, uh, currently a retired professor of immunology and fisheries at Bangladesh Agriculture University. He became professor in 1995 and he served as the founder head of fisheries management department at that university for two years. And later on, he became the dean of the faculty, faculty of fisheries. Dr. Wahab so far has supervised 23 PhDs and um, almost 110 master's students at his faculty. She was the he was the principal investigator of USAID's Feed the Future Aqua Fish Innovation Lab, AFIO, Bangladesh Session, and promoted a small scale aquaculture technology throughout the country. In 2014, when I became familiar with the Professor Wahab, he joined the World Fish in its USAID funded EcoFish, popularly known as EcoFish, yeah. its enhanced coastal fisheries in Bangladesh as the theme leader. She promoted conservation of the uh, of fisheries and coastal biodiversity, livelihoods of uh, fishermen, and their other activities. And of course, uh, he is currently the team leader, uh, continue uh, his uh, responsibility as a team leader in the ongoing second phase, which started in 2019. Professor Wahab received the BIFAD award for scientific excellence in a Fit the Future Innovation Lab. He also received uh, uh, World Fish Board of Trustees Award and Global Research Impact Award from Bangladesh Agriculture University, Agriculture University Research System for his, for his fantastic contribution over the last four years. Professor, we will be hearing from Professor Wahab uh, on the issue climate change and environmental impacts on marine fisheries in the Bay of Bengal and possible adaptation measures. Uh, Professor Wahab, Professor. Thank you very much, moderator. I feel honored to be invited by Bimran Sao jointly uh, um, to participate in this um, um, August uh, occasion that webinar organized by jointly by uh, Bimran and Sao. I must say that our keynote speaker, Professor Kazi Ahsan Habib, has given an exhaustive uh, presentation. He has highlighted the potentials. He highlighted uh, the uh, potential contribution that marine fisheries can do for the economic growth of the country to address the blue economy, our dream, as well as he uh, outlined the challenges and some way forward too. So I take some of his areas that climate change and environmental impacts on marine fisheries in the Bay of Bengal and adaptation measures. Um, the main, three main areas are to be concerned in the Bay of Bengal ecosystem is the pollution and water quality that about 10 large rivers are- Sir, are you sharing your presentation? Because we can't see the slides. Uh, uh, can you not see that one? I have already, I have been sharing, eh? Surprise that you have, cannot see. We can see, we can see, sir, the inbox from where you opened the presentation. 
Uh, can you see it now? Uh, yes, now we can oh, see. That's Thank very you. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, so about 10 rivers, large rivers from different countries are draining the river um, um, polluted waters and carrying sewage borne pathogens and organic loads, solid waste and marine litters, increasing nutrients in the Bay of Bengal, pops are there, heavy metals concentration as concentrating, and also the critical habitat, we are having the degradation and loss of habitats, um, mangrove habitats, degradation of coral reefs that Kazi has mentioned, and the loss and damage to seed grass beds, which is essential for breeding of many marine species, including the crustaceans. Over exploitation of marine resources, decline in marine bioresources, change in species composition, high population. Now the fisheries has been changed to juvenile small type of fishes and uh, changes in marine biodiversity. So the major impacts, uh, apart from, we know that the, um, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, major uh, impacts of the um, climate changes are the seawater rise, salinic intrusion, erratic rainfall, flooding, um, uh, droughts, and cyclones. But we cannot yet uh, match it up or find the relation of these things with the marine fisheries. So we take the practical ones that fish tend to live near their tolerance limit of a range of factors, increased temperature and acidity, lower dissolved oxygen, changes in salinity have deleterious effect in marine biota. The rising ocean temperature, increased acidity, make it difficult for marine organisms like shrimp, oyster, corals, that sort of shellfishes because it disrupt calcification. That means it destroys the corals as well. Many zooplankton have calcium shells, they collapse, does marine food system altered, and cracks in the food system have um, happen and that destroys the ecosystem in fact and affects the natural balance of biodiversity species composition of fish and also interrelated into the ecosystems and these factors can affect the biological processes like the reproductive success whether hillshire will breed hillshire will adequate um, uh, recruitment as well and it depends on the um, uh, migratory patterns. It's that sort of uh, thing uh, it, it comes under climate change impact in ecosystem. Vivekananda India, he has identified, and I have added some more as well, that climate change is not fish stock directly. Seriously affect the struggling pleasing stocks, pelagic stock like herring, mackerel, whiting, sprat, anchovy, sardin, hilsha, they try to go to the cooler areas for breeding. They disperse, so we may lose the fish if the situation continues. Since as in distribution, there is a trend of northward shift of small pelagic fishes. Um, the physiological senses is spawning shifting towards the cooler months. Fish used to breed in March, April. Gradually, it is coming to the uh, cooler months. Early maturation, that means the um, fast maturity takes place at a smaller size, lower recruitment, vulnerability, and economically valuable species, vulnerable and economically valuable species declining that Hassan has mentioned, and our Elizabeth Mansur also mentioned that most important species in the Bay of Bengal, he, he, she referred to Saibu Rahman Chaudhuri, that decline. Fishes need to change fishing practices with higher economic cost and reducing costs. That's the advice for the fishing community. If we look at the major cases now, we see that the hilsha and the smaller uh, pelagic fishes are now getting more important. So we need a conservation of Indian salmon, black spot croquettes, Chinese pomfret, and some other fishes as mentioned. 
So what should be the adaptation measures in a broad category? We need a national climate sense policies and regional coordination among the eight countries, if not among at least with Sri Lanka, India, Thailand, Myanmar, this sort of uh, regional cooperation. It is in practice BIMSTEC and other uh, regional organization and BIMRAD is very active there as well. Traditional management system may support livelihoods, to implement the ecosystem approach of fisheries management is necessary and restore fish recruitment that Bangladesh government has taken care of a little bit, but we should do it more to implement fishery specific adaptation measures plans to increase economic stability of the fishers. And Bangladesh government has recently introduced 65 days land period for ecosystem resilience, spawning success, juvenile survival, increased recruitment, Fishery diversity does include megafauna caste reduced and high caste higher income. And now few research as in does action research for development because I see that many researchers have joined this program, university teacher, research institute, and also policymakers. I believe they get some um, take home message as well that what should we do for environment and climate change? Major river flows to the ocean must be uninterrupted, unfortunately interrupted and going to be interrupted. Pollution from the mega cities, Dhaka, Kolkata and other cities must be controlled. This is very important. We know what is there in uh, Buriganga, what is in Shitalakha and wh where it is going eventually. We need to take care of that. We need to take care of plastics. We need to take care of the ghost nets, etc and biological carrying capacity of the ocean of bay will be estimated and monitored. I believe Saidu Rahman has got some data, but we need robust data uh, to assess the carrying capacity. Stock assessment of major fish, shrimp species, it is ongoing, but I think national priority should be there as well. Artisanal fisheries and social well-being of the coastal fishing communities is a priority. Fisher safety at sea is not taken care of. We need necessary deep GPS device to know where they are fishing. Life insurance, security from pirates is necessary. And also just wages and share of the increased cases ensure and PS payment for ecosystem introduced for the fishing communities of this country. So they are catching the 84% of fish, but they are not getting the due share, not the health of fisheries either. And we need to immediately um, uh, improve the good governance. FAO code responsibilities for fishing and SSF guidelines is not yet adopted in Bangladesh should be done. All artisanal boats should be brought under surveillance and ensure that large marine fishing vessels do not come to the 40 meter depth which are earmarked for the artisanal fishers and they should not cast whole of the hills of fish that has been saved by the sacrifice of the large fishing communities. With that, I'm fishing, finishing here. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, participant, for your kind and attention. This is a very simple presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wah. Thank you very much. Uh, it is always a pleasure to listen to your passionate uh, talk. Uh, whatever the topic is. Thank you very much for covering the climate change impact as well as how, what kind of adaptation option we can, uh, we can adopt and also how to put research into action. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now let us move on to our last presenter, last discussion. Uh, we will be now hearing from Professor Saidu Rahim Chaudhuri. He will be talking on status of marine protected areas of Bangladesh and Management strategy for conservation and sustainable development on marine. Let me tell a little, little bit about uh, uh, Sir Chaudhuri. He is at the moment as a professor of the Institute of Marine Sciences at the University of Chittagong. Oceanography and marine geospatial analysis of the Bay of Bengal are his primary areas of expertise and research interest. Professor Chaudhuri has published the highly acclaimed map of the maritime areas of Bangladesh after 2014 when we settled our border dispute with our neighbors. He served as a survey planner and a regular scientist 
on board RV Min Shondani, the only national fisheries research vessel. He has also participated as a key scientist in the Bay of Bengal research cruise on board the only uh, United Nations research vessel, RV Dr. Fitzdorf Nansen. Professor Choudhury is deeply involved with the Department of Fisheries of the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock in formulating national fisheries policies, marine fisheries rules, fisheries management plans, and marine protected areas, among others. The floor is yours, uh, Professor Choudhury. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, moderator. And uh, thanks to Bimrad and uh, Sharbangla University for allowing me to be present uh, in front of this uh, auspicious audience. Uh, I had understanding that uh, I shall be discussing orally based uh, on the keynote speech. That's why I don't have a presentation as such, but I'd like to touch quickly on uh, the topic that has been given to me for discussion, which is status of marine protected areas of Bangladesh. So we all know that marine protected areas are necessary for the biodiversity and environmental conservation at sea. Uh, and every maritime country has a responsibility of declaring at least 10% of their EEZ to be marine protected areas so that, uh, so, so that the global aim and objective can be reached by participation of every country. So we are falling a little short. We currently have about 4.57% of our EEZ declared as marine protected area, uh, not only for meeting our international obligation to reach 10%, but more so for our own interest, we have to declare as quickly as possible more areas in the sea to protect our biodiversity, which is under serious threat, as you have seen from the keynote speech by Professor Habib, and also uh, by the discussion of uh, Ms. Elizabeth and Professor uh, Wahab. So yes, we have to move very quickly. I just want to uh, point out to uh, uh, point out to a mistake, perhaps by Professor Habib to say, uh, Swatch of no ground to be the first marine protected area, which is basically not true. Our first marine protected area was declared in 2006 by the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock, which is called Marine Reserve, which is technically a marine protected area, which was declared more than 10 years before the second one, the Swatch of no ground. So both have been signed by order of the President of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, so we cannot call the second one as the first. And uh, ignore the first one altogether. So please correct yourself when you uh, cite first or second, which is basically trivial. We don't have to say which is first and which is second. We'll have to basically concentrate on their relative importance, how well they are serving. Yes, the, not all of them are, are serving well, principally because some of them are just declaration. We are not doing enough to actually bring them into fruition. So we have to be more careful, not about declaring areas, but about how do we manage, what do we do about those declarations and how do we actually bring them to fruition? Uh, one particular map from the keynote speech, uh, uh, Professor Habib uh, drew, uh, drew my attention. He has shown the, all those critical areas on the map the, the conservation areas, the fishing grounds, uh, the already declared MPAs. And beyond that, he has shown some areas, for example, the Hilsha breeding area, uh, Kutubia Moheshkali area, St. Martin's area. I would like to bring to the attention of the audience that the Kutubia Moheshkali area is one of our very critical biodiversity hotspots. And what are we doing with that biodiversity hotspot? We are attacking that hotspot from the land by port and power plant development, and from the sea by expansion of our seaport anchorage area. So basically, we are almost ready to destroy that biodiversity hotspot by the so-called development. Yes, development is needed for a country like ours, but 
that development has to be sustainable, which is a mandate. We have a mandate of developing sustainably, but what is being done to our sea is not always done in a sustainable way. For example, take the case of the uh, seaport expansion at sea in a very critical habitat area of our Bay of Bengal has been done without consultation with any authority, any organization, any agency, any scientist, anybody in, 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 the, in the maritime area. That was unilateral in a democratic civil country. That is unfortunate. We have to discuss. That brings me to uh, another point raised by Professor Habib, who said, uh, we have to come together, all institutions, everybody have to come together to, to address the challenges we have now for biodiversity conservation in the Bay of Bengal. But look at this audience. By the law of the lands, the responsibility of protecting biodiversity in the Bay of Bengal lies with two or three ministries, Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock, Department of Fisheries, and as a scientific institution, Bangladesh Fisheries Research Institute, and also Bang Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change with their Department of Environment and Department of Forest, and Ministry of Science and Technology with their Ocean Science Research Institution. I'm not seeing presence or prominent presence if I'm not wrong. I'm not seeing presence from any of these ministries and any of these departments. So, I mean, this is, this is, this is not wrong, but that would have helped us if they were present in this seminar, they could have listened to what we have to say and they would have acted upon what they listened from seminars like this. So when we say come together, we really have to bring people together. Uh, I just want to uh, address uh, a few points. I don't have anything to address to Elizabeth's uh, presentation. Elizabeth was perfect. Elizabeth was excellent. Uh, of course, uh, Professor Habib and uh, Professor Wahab sir was also excellent, but I have to address Professor Wahab sir uh, because he mentioned my name. He said, I have the data. I just want to respond that not only I have the data, we have already published that in the public domain that has been in the uh, website of the government. So anybody can access that data that I had primarily. So we have analyzed everything and we have prepared the report. We have published the report and an electronic version is in, in somewhere in several places in the government uh, uh, government BD website websites. Uh, Professor uh, Wahab has also mentioned about uh, ensuring the safety of life for the fishermen at sea. Uh, I personally uh, currently working with a World Bank project, not the World Bank project that is being uh, carried out in the Department of Fisheries, another World Bank project, which is primarily focused on enhancing safety of life for the small fishermen at sea for Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. So I've been working as a consultant in that project for the World Bank to ensure that we can uh, improve the safety of life at sea and tracking. Professor Wahab has also mentioned that we need to monitor and surveil uh, all the vessels. Currently, the Department of Fisheries with the World Bank project are, uh, uh, are installing VMS, AIS, and GPR, G, GPS tracking devices to all fishing boats. So uh, we are also having a joint monitoring center, which will be, uh, which will be run by Navy, Coast Guard, uh, Shipping Department, Department of Fisheries, and all other relevant organizations, including port authorities. So uh, how be, I just want to, I just want to uh, point out to a philosophical mistake we do all the time. The philosophical mistake we Bangladeshis do all the time in this kind of discussion is that we always say we have a vast sea area which is totally wrong. We don't have a vast shipping area. We are 101th position in the world out of 157 maritime countries. So we have a very tiny, very small and very fragile oceanic area, oceanic ecosystem. We don't take, if we don't take good care of this small fragile ecosystem, that will be gone. That will be gone in the blink of the eye. So we, we, we have to come out that, that philosophical notion that we have a vast area that's wrong, that's totally wrong. Uh, 
I, I just listened to one of the speakers in the fisheries week. He was boasting that we are 27th in marine fisheries production in the world. But we have 101 place in the area of the sea. So are we doing good? No, we are not doing good. We should be 101 in marine fish harvest. We should not be at 27 place, which means which is a clear indication we are harvesting too much. We are killing everything everything that moves in the sea. We have to come out of that. We have to stop killing indiscriminately. Fish and other things, which is core of today's discussion, the biodiversity conservation for future generations. If we really have to conserve biodiversity in the Bay of Bengal, we have to stop killing fish. We should not be at 27th place. We should be at 50th or 60th place in the world. So I now have, at, at, the, at the end, I have five, uh, points for the government to act upon. Number one, we have to appreciate that we have a very small and fragile marine ecosystem. We do not have a vast marine ecosystem, number one. Number two, we have to create a legal and other enabling environment for acting upon that belief that we have a fragile marine environment. We have to identify the conservation needs, which World Conservation Society and others are doing excellent job doing the real science of identifying the conservation needs and conservation areas of interest. Then we have to create robust MPA chain or MPA network. Single MPA is never effective. We have to create a chain of MPAs or a network of MPAs connected to each other by soft or hard means. And then finally, the fifth point is to manage them. Declaration is just the first step. The, the vast majority of work lies after declaration. We have to declare and then manage them so that the purpose of declaring them comes into fruition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Choudhury, for your fantastic uh, presentation, uh, sharing with us the, the gap we have and the uh, total basic mindset change uh, that we need. And uh, we will be coming to the five points that you have discussed. I'm sure uh, we will be hearing from uh, the audience as well. Uh, your, uh, very strong, very strong, uh, passionate uh, call. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I thank all the presenters, the keynote speaker, as well as our discussant. We have heard some excellent uh, points, excellent facts, as well as directions. Now the floor is open for open discussion. I have already seen that uh, there is a question posed by some uh, of the uh, member of audience. One has already been answered by Professor Habib. Professor Habib, there is another uh, question for you. Have you seen that regarding uh, pollution by Vera uh, Anwar? I can read it out for you, Professor Habib. Pollution is killing our rivers and the coastal area increasingly. Fishes are moving away. How much impact it will have in age fishing as it is gaining momentum and people are investing with hope in this venture? Will it be a sustainable investment? Just do it. I am actually. Uh, yeah. From our marine protected area, sometimes we should have question is this this one, right? Well, that's the first one uh, regarding pollution. Okay, okay, pollution is killing our rivers, and uh, <laughs> the coastal area are increasing A -a area and increasing fishes are re are moving away. How much impact it will have in case? fishing as it gaining momentum and people are investing with hope these. Okay, so he, he asked about the case culture, right? Case culture, actually, yeah, the pollution is always uh, the problem, right? So, uh, so pollution, we have to, um, uh, uh, we have to think about this two separate way. So pollution, it is always is occurring. So we have to take the necessary steps from the government or even from ourselves um, in, in the uh, 
in different level to control pollution. But that is another part. But case culture, this is another one. Pollution is occurring also in open sea, right? So fishes are there. So 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 for uh, with the view uh, with thinking this, we cannot um, stop the the areas of our, of. Uh, yeah, this should be addressed separately. And one is the opportunities in uh, to explore our marine biodiversity as well as low economy. Another is the uh, how it hampers. It could be hampered. So yes, we have to uh, we have to take the steps uh, to control pollution. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Habib. Uh, we have one question to all the presenters from Rear Admiral Anwar. We will come to that uh, in a minute. In a minute. But before that, I would like to ask, uh, uh, as a moderator, I would like to ask uh, Elizabeth uh, just a quick question. Uh, you have uh, shown us how uh, engaging fishing communities can help us to plan our, uh, our marine ecosystem. What are the major challenges you feel? Uh, or you have realized that is it acceptable in the planning process, policy making, or what kind of challenges we need to overcome to make that kind of leakage? These are the three. Uh, I just wanted to check that I understood your question correctly. You're asking about challenges of involving fishing communities in marine conservation. Yeah, I know. I, I'm going a bit up, a bit above. Uh, involving them, I know you have been doing it fantastically. But gathering that information, how it is being appreciated by our policy making process, because policy making process doesn't often appreciate evidence gathered by even scientists. How citizen scientists gathering information can be appreciated by policymakers or planners? Well, I, I wouldn't say that policymakers don't appreciate it. I think we have many examples of where the science uh, was used as the basis for, for a lot of decisions. Unfortunately, not all. Um, I think it really depends on the robustness and of the target that you're trying to address with the science that you're doing. Um, in our case, for instance, we're investigating uh, the shark and ray landings, for instance, as well as catches. And that has a very clear um, goal because the government is required um, by international conventions to regulate its trade in the threatened species. So the research that both citizen scientists as well as we as scientists ourselves are doing directly helps the government to achieve those uh, commitments and to work towards them. So I, I, I think it's very much accepted. It's more a question of having the make, ensuring that when organizations, both government and non-organization, non-government organizations say that they're doing something inclusive to actually make sure that it is inclusive, because very often it's not. Organizing one stakeholder workshop in a town and taking that as credit that you have involved the community is is not science it's not the way things are properly done but if you allow me you. i would you, like Elizabeth? i would like to address yes. one may i address the other question came in that i thought was really interesting and um it's yes. a question from uh, mr kazi sarwar hossein and I first have to say that I'm not a, a fishery specialist, so actually Professor Saidur would have to answer this, but I would like to bring this into a larger context. So the question was is, and this comes up often, um, is there enough tuna out there to establish a long line fisheries in our part of the EEZ? And I would really, really like to put this into perspective of what um, Professor Saidur said. Even if the tuna were there, the primary question that we need to ask ourselves is where are the benefits higher? Are the benefits higher in keeping the trophic levels in our marine ecosystem there to support small scale fisheries that don't necessarily uh, access the uh, pelagic tunas? We do have nearshore ones. 
or do we want to continue what we're doing now, which is basically, and I'm saying this a little bit harsh, there's just a few more than 20 family businesses in Bangladesh that are reaping all the profit from industrial fisheries. And do we really want to continue that system where few companies that already have a lot of other diversification options are reaping the benefits and at the loss of our coastal fishermen? So I think that is the more important question to start asking ourselves instead of how can we get further out uh, to see if there's more left there for us to harvest. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Uh, now I would like to move on to Professor Waha. Uh, would you like to respond to the uh, question from uh, our regarding tuna? as well as uh, any other question you'd like to address. Professor Waha. Can you uh, read the question for me, please? Okay, let me read it out. Uh, uh, Kazi Sarwar Hussain, sir, he mentioned that I would like to draw attention to Dr. Waha and Elizabeth and request them to highlight the prospect of tuna fishing in the Bay of Bengal. Do we have an authentic database on the availability of tuna species in our exclusive economic zone? I don't have. And I have two points to make here. Uh, I uh, like to add my comments. It's regarding tuna fishing, sir. Uh, 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 regarding the tuna and large fish case as well, that Bangladesh um, only harvest um, about 16% um, um, from the large vessels and 84% comes from the artisanals and large vessels number 255. So we need to, uh, yes, tuna fisher is important, tuna has to be harvested, but we need a balance. I believe our other colleagues can respond. I do not have data regarding the tuna but I'm in favor of harvesting the tuna fishes. However, before that, we need to reduce the number of existing vessels, which is already too much for Bay of Bengal, and give the space to the artisanal fisheries in a sustainable way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is a question from Rear Admiral Anwar. I, let me read it. Uh, the question is for all the speakers. I would request uh, Professor Chaudhary, Professor Saeed Rahman Chaudhary, to respond to that. Marine protected or protected areas are something we should have. Question is, considering the impact of global warming, pollution, overfishing, and development activities, what could be our better options before it is too late? Since awareness building has not been much effective in this regard, particularly on pollution. What is your suggestion, please? Thank you, sir, for this uh, wonderful question. Uh, frankly speaking, I don't have answer to, I don't have a definitive answer to this, but I probably know the right direction. The right direction is again, bring all institutions together in the discussion because it, it is linked to land-based pollution first. So DOE has to tackle the land-based pollution. We have other pollutions at sea, Department of, uh, Department of Shipping, and Coast Guard and Navy has a role in there. Department of Fisheries has a role in there. Scientific institutions and universities has, has roles in there. The civil society and research organizations, NGOs, ENGOs, all of them have roles. So we'll have to have, uh, instead of these fr uh, fragmentary seminars like this, we'll have to have a national dialogue at some point. The sooner the better. We, shall, we should have a national dialogue, bringing everybody together. It might be multiple day event, but we'll have to chalk out and we'll have to take a clear agenda for moving forward. That's probably the right direction to take at this point. May I add a few uh, sentences yes, sir. to it, uh, moderator? Yes, sir. I, I strongly believe that in the blue economy concept, when there will be more navigation, more ports, more energy, 
um, uh, producing activities, there may be more pollution in the long run. However, the current um, pollution, the major source, do we not know the Dhaka city, what is pouring to the uh, Buriganga and where the water is going? And the plastic, we all are dumping the plastic and eventually ending up to the ocean. And recently, megaphonas are dying. And Elizabeth may have got the data, but I know about a dozen has been found dead in Kuakata only, because our people are surveying and doing that thing. But we cannot do, because we don't have the expertise to analyze this viscera, neither chemical analysis. So Ecofish project analyzed the water of the river system and found that the major rivers around Dhaka city are heavily polluted, not only lack of diesel oxygen or ammonia, but heavily polluted with the heavy metals. But that heavy metals get diluted when it's recessed to um, uh, Champu. When the Padma and Meghna is coming, that is getting diluted and not at all a harmful level while it is going to the Bay of Bengal. That is the pollution level I'm telling you. But the plastic, I think weekly we are collecting 1,000 kilograms of plastic from the coastal sea beaches, Kuakata, Inani Beach, and other beaches, Labori areas as well. And Wild fish, neither Department of Fisheries can take care of that. Eventually, Department of Environment should jump into it to keep the country clean. Otherwise, we are uh, a, a lower income, uh, develop, um, uh, yeah, low medium in, uh, income countries will be high gradually, but we need to improve our environment, not only marine fisheries, but for our general health, for everything. So, as Professor Saeed Rahman rightly said, if the organizers can organize exclusively pollution and this sort of thing, there can be a very good discussion. And I give you an example that National Geographic Channel with the British, American, Indian, Bangladeshi women scientists as well as journalists made a travel from sea to the origin. They traveled to the Himalayas using the Meghna, yes, Padma, Ganges, and they found that thousands of tons of abundant nets are lying in the water bodies, let alone only nets even. These yes, are actually ghost nets. Thank you very much. Yes, may, may, I, may I please, Saidu, Professor Saidur, may I please add two points to the dis ongoing discussion? Very, very quickly, Professor Saidur, very yeah. quickly. Yeah. yeah, I just want to respond to uh, Elizabeth. Uh, she rightly pointed out that uh, the industrial fisheries is governed by or owned by a handful of families, uh, rich families who are reaping the majority of the benefits. Uh, that has to change. To me, basically, we don't have an industrial fishery. We have artisanal fishing by large boats. That's what it is. It's not even industrial fishing. They are catching fish in the, in the, in the artisanal area by sophisticated machinery. That's, that's by definition is industrial fishing that has to stop. And I want to respond quickly to Professor Wahab uh, who pointed out that industrial fishing is catching only 16%, which I myself and several other scientists, both national and international believe that which is a wrong figure because over the years we have inflated our artisanal catch by numbers without any proper statistics, without proper or without any proper data collection. We have a very weird practice of inflating our number or increase in production every year by 5%. That's the requirement of the government. So everybody just put 5% plus and say, okay, this year production is such and such. To my belief is that industrial production, uh, artisanal catch is at least 150% inflated, which means the industrial catch will be more than one third of our total catch. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, drawing attention of uh, Captain Minar. Uh, we can see that there are a few raised hands. Uh, can we open the floor because we have some time? Yeah, we have some time. We can go for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Elizabeth, please. Yeah. I, I would like to respond to a couple of very interesting comments that came. Number one was about climate change and how we can move forward faster. Um, I just wanted to point out that the swatch of no ground, the deep 900 meters plus deep submarine canyon 
It acts as an ecological refuge, both for fin fish and megafauna that cannot move poleward because our Asian continent are there. And these cool waters have been proven um, to be of high importance for climate change adaptation. The second thing that I wanted to point out what um, Saidu Rohan said about um, the marine fisheries, I think one of the big lackings that we know is there is the enforcement, is enforcement and monitoring patrols, both for MPA, but also for uh, illegal fisheries. And I do think that if we, um, if we can possibly start with joint agency patrols for the MPAs, I think we will see a, a, a big change, hopefully also in the so-called industrial fisheries. So I, I would really advocate, and WCS is working hard, to set up um, joint patrols uh, in the marine area, as we have done in the terrestrial area. And then the very important point that um, Wahab sir addressed in terms of pollution, I think it's really important not to come up with laundry lists that means that we weigh all the different problems the same. We must prioritize those factors that put our marine ecosystem productivity at highest risk. And in our Bay of Bengal, the bycatch of marine megafauna and overfishing by far um, is higher ranked at the moment than pollution. I'm not saying we don't have to address pollution, but we also have to keep in perspective how they affect um, the overall ecosystem. Thank you so much for allowing me to reply. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as for the uh, program schedule, we have around uh, 20 minutes uh, left. So uh, I propose that uh, we spend that time. I can see that five raised hands. I'm requesting the panelists and speakers to note down if there is any questions to them. And I'm requesting the uh, main audience who will be speaking in, in a minute to be very brief, very brief and very specific uh, about their question. Once we listen to all these five questions, then one by one, I will be uh, giving uh, one minute or two to all the five presenters, to sorry, four presenters to share their uh, reflection. Then we would be summing things up. Then we will be hearing from our uh, DG Pimbra for his closing comment. So now I'm requesting Dr. Uh, Azam Choudhury. Thank you, please. Uh, could, could you please hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly, please. Uh, thank, thank you, moderator. Uh, I'm Dr. Azam Choudhury from, from the University of Dhaka. I am an assistant professor here. Recently, I finished my PhD on physical oceanography and climate change. Basically, I try to connect the physical oceanography with the biology geology and chemical oceanography. So uh, thank you so much, Bimrat, for arranging such a uh, nice conference where I can see so many seniors. In fact, I am a retired lieutenant commander. Uh, from Sir, your Navy. question, please. Sir, your question, please. Yeah, yeah. my question, uh, my question is uh, directly uh, about the challenges. So about the challenge, what I, my observation is that in the Northern Bay of Bengal, we don't have uh, like uh, some data, like no mooring buoy, no floats, even very less in situ data sets. Uh, so uh, because observation is very important for the ocean, oceanic research, and this is the challenge. Secondly, uh, numerical ocean model is uh, the uh, recently uh, very latest way to do the research. And in Bangladesh, we don't have uh, like some numerical models. And thirdly, uh, I can see that uh, uh, people who are study the biological production, uh, the need to address something like the physical phenomena, dynamics and thermodynamics with the ocean. Like I had a question, why dead zone is formed? So it's related to the physical oceanography. So uh, I want to humble, I have a humble request uh, to the policy uh, makers and the authorities and seniors that to address the issue, to challenge the overcome, for the economic growth of Bangladesh. Like we need to collaborate the uh, all physical, chemical, biological, and policy maker to, together. Thank you. And thank what's you. the comment? Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Now I'm requesting Nitika uh, Afifat. Would you please pose your question? 
just introduce yourself and just uh, ask the question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Ritika. I'm research officer of BIMRAD. Actually, I have a uh, just query to Saidur Rahman, sir. Actually, I support your uh, uh, information that is logical, sir, that we have a teeny marine area. But uh, if we see that in 2018 FAO report, Bangladesh has ranked 11th position for marine fish production. So still we are in traditional way. We are uh, not able for deep sea fishing and uh, so many circumstances are there, but uh, how can you relate these two comments? How Bangladesh, what are the mainly positive sides for Bangladesh for this ranking where uh, there are so many um, barrier in case of Bangladesh, in case of uh, marine fisheries? So how can you relate this uh, info? And my second question is to uh, Ahsan Habib, sir, that uh, till now, according to FO, FAO report or BFRI report, we know that there is only 47, uh, 475 species, marine species that came through the 1980s study. And still we don't have any strong report or uh, or reference for using such types of uh, info that Bangladesh uh, fishing for uh, marine biodiversity is increasing. And that is very important information set that you have mentioned that we have uh, 700 something uh, new biodiversity in the marine, uh, marine area. So is it a published document set so that we can use it as a reference or, and uh, would you please uh, briefly share your experience that uh, how did you uh, uh, find this uh, new diversity so that we young researchers can go for further research through your guideline? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now I'm requesting Captain Azam, Shafiul Azam. Would you please pose only one question because we don't have much time because there are same several raised hands. Please, Captain Azam. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, thank you very much sir, for giving me the floor. However, I'll take a little bit of time because I guess I am the only one uh, who is actually going out into the sea and trying to implement the things that uh, are being talked about in this seminar. So I am uh, Captain Shafil Azam, uh, commanding officer of one of the frigate of Bangladesh Navy, BNS Shadinata. Uh, I'm attending this meeting from Chattergram uh, from on board my ship. So what I want to say that I want to assure everyone uh, in this seminar that the uh, units of the Bangladesh Navy are doing their bit out into the sea for implementation of any kind of conservation policy or the regulation uh, that has been imposed by the government of Bangladesh. Just now we have finished the 65 days of ban uh, of fishing into the Bay of Bengal, uh, which had been a wonderful uh, and a beautiful success by the uh, uh, relentless effort of the Bangladesh Navy, by the deployed units 24 seven and 365 days. However, there are some challenges we, which we cannot handle. I want to mention those things only. And the questions goes to basically to Professor Kazi Hassan Habib or for that matter to any of the speakers of this uh, seminar. First of all, the pollution, you have already mentioned about it, but the pollution out into the sea and St. Martin's Island. St. Marin's Island is a wonderful place with a lot of marine biodiversities, but the pollution is being done by the tourists over there. The tourists are going by the day, come back by the evening, and they do a lot of pollution over there. And I had a talk in my last trip with the local chairmen uh, and the local uh, the leaders there, and they said they are trying, but they cannot really implement it. So there is one part that I think that we need to uh, focus on. The second point is, is about the indiscriminate fishing. I mean, the local fishing boats are not registered and they go out into the fishing with their local, uh, all kinds of methods, which is sometimes impediments are creating impediments to the naval units to go for the uh, effective patrolling. So we cannot really go to the, go close to them and implement uh, the things that are uh, being said. So they fish into the fairways they fish, sometimes the trawlers are coming below the 40 meters line. So we are trying to uh, refrain them from doing all this. But uh, I think uh, in that case, we have to think about what can be done. I have two suggestions very quickly, and uh, that also forms the question. That is, we need to develop the community awareness among, to the, among the fishing communities, that uh, what, is to, what is to be done and what is not to be done and what time it is to be done. And the second one is that, that we need to really register all the fishing boats through a regulatory body and enforce the rules and regulations locally. 
by the local authorities and the same marines. So I would like to know uh, from the professor that what is your comment on this, uh, three, these three aspects? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh... For joining us from your board. Thank you very much for sharing your questions as well as your observation. We have four raised hands. Uh, first, I will be asking Dr. Abdullah Mamun, then uh, Commodore Sheikh, I can't read the full name. You can know who you are. Then Dr. Latif, and finally, okay, uh, uh, Anwar Islam, and finally, Kazi Sarwar Kursan uh, So, Dr. Mamun, please. Very try to be very brief, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, good, yes. good day. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Mamoon. I am uh, from the medium, medium coastal area of Bangladesh, that is uh, Noakali Science and Technology University. We are very close to the Magna History here. So, uh, first thing is that the uh, uh, presentation was. Uh, the presenter has presented many interesting issues on about blue economy and other things. So one thing that Professor Saidiraman Chaudhary sir mentioned here, in case of metadata, we really need to rely on the national data sets. Even the FAO, they are also forming their data set based on this data. But in many case studies, we found that deviation, this is why so far illegal, unreported and unregulated uh, I, uh, IUU has been adopted by FAO and many agencies. So I would like to get some uh, uh, direction from his side. So how we really would manage these things that our case study is showing one type of uh, directions where the national data sets is going, uh, showing the other direction. Even in the same ministry, Ministry of Fisheries, they're giving us two different ideas in, in terms of animal protein consumption. So we are we are very excited to see that government. Uh, uh, are you are you? Let me let me ask one question, please. That IUCN has Go to declared. The question, please. Go to the yeah. question, please. Yeah. So so IUCN already declared along with the professor Wapsar was also their merit protected area, especially the Nizundip. I very close to my my university as well. My question is that so we are talking a lot about pollution and other issues, even SSF and LSF, but. We are going to formulate a new strategy to protect the marine, marine areas by declaring many protected areas. But if you see the indiscriminate collection of marine PL in the government data set, it is shown 5,000 kg per year. But in many cases, studies it's shown 216, 216 million PL are collecting every year. And we are killing another, another 17,000 uh, other uh, ichthyoplankton from our coastal habitat. The, the real impact we faced in the southwest coastal region in the gear farming system, where we lost many indigenous species and tilapia took the places over there. So whenever we talk about marine fisheries and blue economic issues, do you have any do you have any plan to consider the marine shallow and brackish water uh, areas uh, as well, where many people's livelihood are linked to these activities, especially gear system and brackish water aquaculture yeah. system in coastal floodplain area. Thank you very much. Thank that you, Dr. Mamu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commodore Sheikh. I can't read the full name. Can you please unmute yourself? Yeah. Uh, Mahmoud. Please, sir. I'm Commodore Sheikh Mahmoudul Hassan. I'm the former chief hydrographer of Bangladesh Navy. So uh, my question is regarding the ocean management, actually. I have been listening uh, this sort of webinar, seminar for long 10, 15 years where all the time we say all institutions should close, come close together, scientists should come close together, policymakers should come close together, we should work together, we should uh, make these seminars. But my question is that we are telling all these things, even today the, all these speakers, what they have said, what is, their, what is their recommendation. These are the recommendation I am listening last 10 years. So where is our progress? of the sustainable ocean management for the Bay of Bengal. Will we be continuously telling all these things, but can we not come together and work for the Bay of Bengal? This is my question. Now, what we should do, how we should go about, and what the policymakers should do, 
I want the uh, discussion on them. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I'm going to Dr. Lotif, PSO BFRI. Dr. Lotif, please. Dr. Lotif, we can't hear you. Okay, moving on to Mr. Anwarul Islam. Yes, sir, can you hear me? Yes, please. All right. Uh, my uh, my point. I want to comment. Uh, my one first comment is already covered by Dr. Yes, hello. Very 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 nicely. Dr. Uh, Latif, we will. Uh, Dr. Latif, we will come to you later. Let us uh, listen to Anwar Islam, please. Thank you. Uh, my my uh, second comment will be uh, what uh, slightly differing with uh, Ms. Elizabeth that. We know being, I am an ex uh, fleet commander of Bangladesh Navy. Now, uh, with my experience, we know that deep, deep sea fish, uh, blue uh, uh, print mm -hmm. tonas, and all kind of fishes are there in the deep and the southern part of our EZ. Yeah. Even if we we have the liberty to go further south in the open open sea in the in the, in the high seas, so we need data. So, can anybody tell me who can provide those data? Is there an initiative that? Uh, these data will be made available for the investors so that uh, they can they can they, they can know that at what time of the year which fishes are available with long line fishing and they do they can do wonders over there as our entrepreneurs are, has always been very resilient at that place. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Islam. Now I'm moving to Kazi Sarovar Hussain Sir. Sir, would you please? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ifanullah. Uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Bimrat for arranging this um, webinar. As a practitioner, we have been at sea, I have been at sea for myself, I can say for 40 years. I have I you know, operated in the Bay of Bengal for 40 years, and I have seen the evolution of the marine biodiversity as a seaman. I was a diver in the Navy and I also have dived for last four decades and seen the gradual biological and chemical transformation of the Bay of Bengal. And the, uh, the, the researchers, they have the point that they have been brought out by various, various eminent researchers have very much indicated that the, there are, um, you know, uh, requirement for you know, urgent uh, addressing this issue urgently. Now, I, I'd like to uh, take a cue from uh, Admiral Anwar. He said about the uh, uh, the uh, avail availability of tuna fish and the data that we need. Now, uh, a, there is a there is an organization called In Indian Ocean Tuna Commission, which maintains the data on the av availability of the various tuna species all over the Indian Ocean. Now, if Bangladesh uh, government or Bangladesh as a, in, as a country or government for that matter, or Ministry of Fisheries or uh, DG Fish, Fisheries could have approached the Indian, uh, the Tuna Commission of Indian Ocean, they could have gotten this data and used this for uh, you know, commercial purposes. Now, I would like to humbly, very humbly uh, may, make a point about a, Dr. Elizabeth's comment about the uh, about you know creating a balance between artisanal fishing and the industrial fishing. Now, what I was saying, it, it was my actually it was my point about the uh, the tuna uh, tuna harvesting in in Bay of Bengal. So, what I was trying to uh, you know hint at is that how do we balance? There is a need to balance between the. Uh, between the artisanal fishing and also industrial fishing. And we have to really, as I would very much agree with uh, uh, Admiral Anwar, we have to go south, further south, towards the deeper water and uh, you know, harvest sustainably, of course, harvest as much uh, you know, uh, value-added fishes that we can harvest. And we are, you know, we are uh, as Dr. Saidi Rahman has said, we are actually killing all the fishes. Actually, we are, uh, you know, fish, we are in indis the indiscriminate fishing that we are doing, you know, they are not adding value to the, uh, to the, the fishery uh, resource that we are harvesting. So if we go southward and go uh, for deep sea fishing, maybe we'll be able to add value to the, um, 
the, the fishing industry that exists in Bangladesh. I would like to take another cue from uh, Commodore Hassan. He said about, you know, we, are, we have been listening all these for last 15 years about, you know, all should come together. Now, there was a propos proposal. I would like to very humbly bring it, uh, bring it up again. There was a pro proposal to form a maritime division under the auspices of the Honorable Prime Minister. They, like it, 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 the maritime division, you know, there was a misconception that maritime division would be probably controlled by the Navy. Navy never wanted to do the maritime division. We wanted a maritime division under the, minister, under the Honorable Prime Minister, which could be run by even a, even a, you know, a, a, a civil bureaucrat, where all the maritime agencies could, uh, could come under one umbrella and uh, make their recommendations and their, uh, and their viewpoints. And also the, they, they put up their uh, research-based data and recommendations for the government or for the relevant or concerned organization to follow up. So these, these, uh, if, if Bimrat could have you know, uh, collected uh, these uh, recommendations of this seminar and put up, put up these agendas, to the government or for the Navy, Navy for that matter, about forming a maritime division, which can, you know, coordinate all the maritime activities of Bangladesh. This this could be a viable option for Bangladesh. So yes. with all, and thank you very much for giving me the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, well, thank you very much, everybody who participated in this open discussion. We had a very fruitful discussion. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, we have already crossed our time. I have to be a bit strict. I will be giving two minutes to each of the presenters. So obviously you will not be able to touch upon everything. Just mention it is as your last word. No need to respond to someone because others will be started responding back to you. Just take it as a, we all understand the questions. So first I'm uh, giving the floor to Professor Kazi Hassan Habib to say your uh, last few words and uh, you know, closing remarks, if you may call it. Professor Habib, you have two minutes. Thank you very much. I would like to my heartfelt, uh, I would like to pay my heartfelt thanks to all the audiences and participants. And I also want to give uh, my gratitude to the Beam Reds uh, and, and to actually, they, this is the, I will, uh, give the credit totally to Bimred. Actually, they are the main uh, actually uh, the, the player to arrange this uh, this um, webinar. I was really busy last few days, so I could not give much more time. So uh, and uh, thank you all. And uh, I, and I had one uh, one uh, someone maybe Ritika uh, gave a question. So I answered in the message box. Uh, my paper has been published in the Bangladesh Journal of Fisheries. Please uh, look uh, that issue. Uh, look at that issue. So uh, finally, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all. Actually, uh, I thought it was very quick uh, presentation of mine. Uh, I um, accommodated many uh, information, but uh, could not uh, elaborate uh, uh, due to time constraints. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, if if anybody have any uh, um, has any question, please ask me and also over phone or by uh, sending me uh, email. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, Habib. Thank you so much. Now I move to uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, your two minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also appreciate the questions and comments that came in after our presentations, and I'm going to. Uh, since I spoke about marine megafauna, I'm going to go to the smallest um, part. Uh, Dr. Abdul Al Mamun, you brought up a, a very interesting question, and I think it leads into also what um, Officer Kazi Sarwar Hossein also mentioned. The depletion of the lowest level, so this would be the uh, post larvae of small fish and smaller, has as I said, a huge impact on the ecosystem itself and on the ecosystem productivity. I'd like to make two points. Number one is it, um, the post larva collection using fine mesh mosquito net is already illegal. Um, so that is a big difference to when we're talking about other 
uh, non-selective fishing gear. And I agree with you completely that we must enforce that because it is depleting the very basis of the marine ecosystem. Um, I would like to go on and just to put that in the marine perspective, the same thing is happening with the marine setback nets. We are producing vast amounts of so-called trash fish. And just like the larvae that go into the farms, almost all of that leads to export of our fish protein. And I find it ethnically really questionable that we are emptying our marine resources uh, on the cost of people to feed or to satisfy other nations' needs. We feed our fish to chickens and fish in the ponds to make fish that are profitable in export. So I do think our entire um, fishery system is something that does need to be thought of. And one more question I just wanted to say about the expanding fisheries to southern waters. Uh, you said we have to go south and we have to value, um, we have to uh, find more value, add value. But the question is really added value for whom? Are we added, adding value for the industrial companies, for the corporations that run this so-called industrial fisheries? Or do we insist that we add value for our food security, for a sustainable blue um, national economy, instead of depleting our near shore, mid shore and pelagic waters? I think we have not got a very good track record of being selective. So the planning and enforcement, as was said by many others, is crucial. And this can only be done in strong collaborations. Thank you very much. Professor Wahab, your two minutes starts now. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we, Bangladeshi Bengali people, uh, love territoriality. Therefore, interinstitutional collaboration often doesn't work. Bimrad, a product of our national pride, naval forces, they can coordinate inter-institution and organize these things. That would be very good. And one colleague from Shadhinata Naval Fleet mentioned awareness building. Awareness building is going on uh, through different projects of Department of Fisheries. Also, World Fish USA funded project is doing that. One colleague mentioned that he is listening these words for 20 years, nothing has happened. 10 years, nothing has happened. Many things have happened. Hilsha production has been doubled, tripled. Fisher's economic welfare has been improved. Now we are talking about the pollution. Now we are talking about the plastic. Now we are talking about the ghost nets. Now we are talking about the city um, uh, 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 sewages. So that sort of will be taken care of. I believe we'll continue to discuss and um, 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 make the people aware and policymaker will listen to, policymaker listen to because nets have been made 6.5 from 4.5. Then um, uh, PL fishing has been already stopped. Uh, the fishers community, in fact, one thing is absent. In the blue economy, Europe has dropped fisheries in blue economy because they think that it has no future. Let's go for aquaculture. But Bangladesh is a different country. Bangladesh has proved that Hilsha can be tripled, and Bangladesh is third most important country in the world in inland uh, capture fisheries. So Bangladesh can prove that fisheries itself is a very important component in blue economy. So we need a sustainable management of the artisanal fisheries and respect to Saidur, uh, Professor Saidur regarding the um, artisanal mechanization, etc. There will be rules regulation for that. We need to study IUU. Where are we now? And we need to reduce the fishing fleet and naval uh, fleet can help us in doing that, help the government to reduce these things. And last one, we are doing the training for responsible fishing and safety at sea for the fisher mazis the head fisher fishing person in the boat. So that is started. We are distributing the life jacket as well. And lastly, you would be surprised to see the Bangladesh have thought of this thing that we have introduced Blue Guard from the World Fish and Dog, 
who will clean up the entire 710 kilometer of coastal belt from plastic and nets. Thank you very much. I think that this sort of organization will help us to bring together and open up and enhance the efforts of Bangladeshi people and scientists. Thank you very much. Thank you all Thank you. dignitaries and nice questions. Thank you very much. So now uh, I'm requesting Professor Choudhury, Saeedur Rahman Choudhury, to uh, say his last responses. Thank you very much. Uh, Choudhury. Thank you. Uh, I probably have not got uh, Ms. Brithika's question very well, but what I have understood her question was about the FAO fisheries statistics about the fisheries production, marine fisheries production in Bangladesh. Uh, and he probably asked me what I think about the data. My response would be, well, uh, FAO does not create the data. FAO get the data from our government system, our government reporting and statistics system. And let me tell you that uh, our data collection system is not perfect. We have to perfect it. There is a lot of uh, uh, discrepancy in our data. We are working very hard within the Department of Fisheries to correct that system. Uh, uh, again, uh, here is a philosophical catch. I, I, I always oppose calling it production. Production is what you produce. You don't produce anything at sea. You just catch it, whatever is produced by the nature. So we should, we should, we should not really call it production. This is harvest. Uh, uh, I uh, quickly jumping to commander, uh, retired commander Hassan's frustration. I totally share your frustration. We do talk these things year after year, decade after decade, and we really don't reflect on what we say in seminars and webinars. Uh, uh, we simply don't have a culture of working together. I don't know how we can change that. Uh, I want to quickly respond to a few, but not by mentioning name. Uh, one is IUU. IUU was probably raised by Dr. Abdullah al Mamun from Noakali. Uh, uh, the government is currently in the process of, uh, process of finally finalizing the national plan of action uh, for combating IUU, uh, assisted by FAO. Fortunately, I've been involved with that and, and I, I, I just know that. But basically, if, if there was someone present from the uh, Department of Fisheries here, he could have uh, told us better, better than me. Uh, about very important and interesting question about tuna fishing. So why don't we explore tuna fishing? Elizabeth has, uh, uh, has a point of view. I have a slightly different point of view. Uh, not contradicting with hers, but is, is, is a different angle of view. That's, we cannot just go out at sea and catch tuna. The quota is regulated by IOTC. We cannot catch any more than what IOTC allows us to, allows us to catch, even if it is in Bangladesh's waters. We cannot catch more tuna than IOTC allows us. For the last two years, we have, we have been, Bangladesh have been a very new member of the IOTC, just two or three years. And for the last two years in the Department of Fisheries and Ministry of uh, Fisheries and Livestock, we have been negotiating with, with IOTC to increase our quota, which is currently very low, only 2000 tons. So for 2000 tons of quota, you cannot even operate one ship, you cannot even operate one ship, let alone a total fleet. So first we'll have to have that negotiation, improve our quota, and then we'll have, and, sure. uh, and, and then, and then, data. We have, uh, if someone from the Department of Fisheries, particularly the project director of the Department of Fisheries were present in this seminar, he could have told better. But because I know uh, Department of Fisheries and Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock has taken a new project for piloting of tuna. The, the ultimate aim, the, the, the only objective of this project is to explore how much Shoturi, we can't hear you. You have been muted. Oh, sorry. So uh, Department of Fisheries has a pilot project for exploration of tuna resources in the Bay of Bengal in our EZ and slightly beyond. So once that project is complete, we will have some picture of how much explorable tuna we have and whether that much tuna we can actually catch by the quota of the IOTC. So this is, sure. um, tuna is much more complicated than what we think. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. Thank you very much. Uh, I will take just one minute. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for your active participation, not only from the speakers responding to audience's question, but also audience, uh, member of audience, they also posed different questions, different insights. 
um, in this issue of marine biodiversity and how to balance it with our economic development. I just uh, conclude my uh, few words with some words that came up again and again. Equity, inclusion, joint collaboration or collaborative before data, data came up again and again, inflation of data, use of data by investors, challenges, uh, and uh, how to bring everybody together through uh, maritime uh, division or something like that. So I thank uh, Bimraj uh, as well as uh, Sri Bangla Agricultural University for having me here. And it has been a good discussion. We have learned a lot, at least I have learned a lot. Uh, thank you very much. Now I'm giving the floor to the Director General Bimra, but then you know, he will be giving his concluding remark and closing the session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haseeb. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Respected Acting Chairman of Bimrat, Keynote Speaker, Panel Discussion, Moderator, Prominent Academicians, Distinguished Participants, Maitem Professionals, and Researchers. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and good afternoon. It is a great honor for me to be here today on behalf of Bimrat and Shere Bangla Agriculture University. At the outset, may I take this opportunity to extend my sincere thanks and profound gratitude to the keynote speaker and panelists of today's webinar. I sincerely acknowledge their kind participation and also acknowledge the distinguished guests for their kind presence and make the webinar a meaningful one. Distinguished guests, the theme of today's discussion was Marine Biodiversity of Bay of Bengal, assessing the challenges for the economic growth of Bangladesh. It represents a very pertinent issue for Bangladesh considering the present scenario. The topic addresses the timely issues, not only for the maritime community in Bangladesh, but also for the neighboring coastal states. If you look at the subject, it is basically composed of two intertwined issues. Firstly, the status of marine biodiversity in the Bay of Bengal, and secondly, to assess the challenges which need to be addressed so that it helps the economic growth of Bangladesh. Without any doubt, there are many challenges in this arena. The objective of today's webinar was to find out these challenges to put forward the suggestions to the policymakers. Eminent fellows, you all will agree with me that today's discussion was an informative one. The speakers who have expertise on the given topics have deliberately presented their findings and perspectives before us. Today, we, have, we are enlightened to know a lot of various findings and new ideas, which have certainly broadened our views on the crucial issues of marine biodiversity. Distinguished guest, the moderator of the webinar has aptly summarized the whole discussion. From my side, I would like to point some key observation. Firstly, for protecting biodiversity, we should put more focus on fundamental research to accommodating on-ground information. And then again, there is a semantic gap between policy and research. We have excellent body of research on this subject. This need to be translated into policy now. Thus, it is important to communicate the research findings to policymaking circles. Finally, in and of itself has a particular area is necessary to sustain the ecosystem, which is truer in terms of marine ecosystem. Millions of people in Bangladesh depend on marine resources for their livelihood. Thus, in terms of policy, protecting biodiversity is not just an environmental discourse, but also an important step towards the realization of Blue Economy Initiative of Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude, on behalf of the acting chairman, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks and profound gratitude once again to the keynote speaker, panelist, and moderator for sparing their valuable time to participate in today's event. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Shere Bangla Agriculture University for taking the initiative to host 
this webinar jointly with BIMRA and looking forward to more collaborative engagement in future. I also sincerely acknowledge the gracious presence of all distinguished guests and MATEM scholars. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Allah uh, for Take care. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. I'm going to be recording the bond to put the prayer. Informally, the Kyo Kata will say, I'm a Kata will be very amateur. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hasim, uh, for nicely moderating this session. Thank you, Excellent. Thank you. I'm going to be recording it. Thank you so much, everyone. Imran, I'm recording it on live table that I want to put it on. It's a program session. Already a live streaming bond watch.